Hey everyone, and welcome to my vlog about a day in the life of studying and going to class as a Wofford student. My name is Emma Sutton, and I'm a sophomore here at Wofford from Fort Mill, South Carolina. I'm double majoring in environmental studies and government with a minor in economics. Today, I hope to show you how to succeed in your classes by giving you some great study tips that I've learned here since my freshman year, and how studying can be a fun activity with friends. And above all, I hope to show you why I love Wofford so much throughout the day. So right now I just woke up and it's about 7.30 and I'm gonna to head to Burwell to grab some breakfast with my roommate, Abby. So I'll catch you on the walk there. Heading to Burwell for breakfast right now, which is the dining hall. I don't do this every single morning, but I like to get up early, even if I don't have morning classes. Usually I would have my music class, History of American Music at 10.30, but my professor canceled class today. When making your schedule, I recommend scheduling your classes mostly on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday so that you can use extra time on Tuesday and Thursday to study. I find that it helps me stay more productive if I can have most of my classes on those three days and study on the other two. All right, so we're about to go in and we're gonna have our breakfast and I'm happy with my roommate, Abby, today. After Burwell, I headed back to the dorm to do some laundry since my class ended. And now I'm walking to Milliken to study for my afternoon class. If a task can be done in about two minutes, I always recommend doing it so you don't get overwhelmed and you stay productive. And so here's a time lapse of me doing some work. Right now I'm writing a reading reflection for my environmental humanities class. I really enjoyed this course because the professor only asked us to read the assigned text, complete a weekly reflection, and engage in class discussion. I find that it's easier to learn and relax classes like this one. Today I'm studying in Acorn Cafe. It's probably my favorite study spot on campus because you can use terrier bucks to buy coffee and muffins, and I always spend time with my friends. My friend Isaiah sat with me earlier, and now I'm sharing some muffins with my roommate, Abby. I decided to make an outline after I finished my reading reflection for my philosophy exam next week, which I'll talk to you more about later. Before I head to my one o'clock class, which is Economic History of the United States, I wanted to give you a quick walkthrough of Milliken. This building is home to our science majors, which are chemistry, biology, physics, and psychology. Even if you're not one of these majors like I am, you'll spend substantial time here if you enjoy studying with other people. Milliken has long tables for you to sit with classmates, roommates, and other friends. I always love coming in here, even if I'm doing work, because I always see someone I know. During midterms and finals, Milliken is packed with people. During these times, I've seen people camp out here and order pizzas or pluck up their Keurig beside them for coffee. You never have to worry about packing up all your stuff if you leave because of the Wofford Honor Code. When I pause studying to go eat or go on a quick walk, I'm completely comfortable leaving my belongings at my seat. There's also study rooms for projects, free printing, and the coffee bar, which is where I was sitting earlier. Overall, finding a place you're comfortable in to study and work is super important because it helps you stay productive. You're much more likely to get through work if you're somewhere you enjoy being. So I'm going to walk actually by the side entrance so I can show you all the brand new environmental studies building. I'm so excited to have my classes in here because it's Green Globe certified for its sustainable performance. The department has certainly found a way to make it feel homey with our greenhouse in the back and garden on the side, which grows seasonal produce for our food lab courses. It's a unique building on campus that I encourage you to check out whenever you're here. While I'm walking, I want to talk about what makes the environmental studies major and frankly Wofford College so special. I love the community aspect that the environmental studies major offers. I find that I make so many connections with professors. For instance, right now I'm working with my advisor on an independent study project that I'll complete when I'm abroad next fall. That level of personal attention is something that only Wofford can offer with its 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio. In normal times, students and professors travel off campus for labs that can include walks at the Cottonwood Trail, Glendale, and Croft State Park. Glendale is an off-campus site that Wofford owns that's open to the public. Wofford students commute there on lab days to explore the surrounding garden, trails, kayak down the river, and even say hi to the college's coach, Nigel and Curry. If you're ever here on campus, you have to check out these spots. Before I head over to the Daniel Building, I want to give you guys a tour of the library. If you're someone who likes to study by yourself, this is definitely the location for you. The school recently renovated it, so there's some new awesome features I want to show you all. On nice days, people are gathered outside the tables to study, and there's plenty of seating inside in individual lounge and study rooms, as well as seating in the middle section with the computers. 
The library now offers a kiosk if you need a quick snack or coffee break that takes terrier bugs, so it works just like the Acorn Cafe in Milliken. It's also home to our free student-run writing center, which is a fantastic resource if you ever need help on a paper. On sunny days, I love sitting on the back porch. It's the perfect place to relax and do some reading for class. The library staff is always helpful. As a freshman, you're assigned a new student success team with a personal librarian that's always accessible if you need help with research. You can easily schedule an appointment on the library's website if you ever need assistance. Lastly, the library has a second floor with individual cubicles if you want a more private and quiet study spot. Like Milliken, it also has free student printing. So now I'm going to be crossing the street in a minute for my economics class in Daniel Building, which is home to our ROTC program, the philosophy department, and the government and international affairs departments. If you're interested in careers in political science, the professors here are always willing to meet with you to discuss internships, such as our Capitol Hill interim, how to build your resume, and how to make connections in the field you desire. If you're interested in law like me, Walford has an amazing reputation in the legal field. Our pre-law society will prepare students for law school after Walford. Aside from offering a pre-law interim, students can attend panels with Walford alum who went on to law school and law school admissions offices. I recently attended a panel on Thursday with Walford alum that went to Harvard, Georgetown, Penn State, and Wake Forest Law, just to name a few. So there's definitely a great success rate if you're interested in the legal field if you go to Wofford. All right, so I'm about to walk into my class and I will catch you guys in a few minutes. All right, you guys, so I just got back from my um, one o'clock class. So that was my only afternoon class. So I will be done for classes for the day. Right now I have some downtime while waiting for my advisor to um, discuss my academic plan for my juniors and senior year. So I want to take this time to give you guys some more study tips that I haven't discussed yet. Um, so just some first like general college class tips I have is just, just to stay organized. And it might seem obvious, but it's definitely really important since your professors, you know, don't discuss deadlines like they might have in high school or in middle school. Um, so I, I really recommend writing everything down, which is, isn't something that I did in high school. Um, so as you can see, I have my planner right here for the week and I have a lot of dates and assignments I cross off, kind of like a to-do list. So in these columns over here, I do my meetings that I have, I'd schedule the times or any Zoom calls that I have or club activities scheduled for the day. And then in the middle, I do my daily homework assignments. And then I also like to, at the beginning of each semester, to gather all my syllabi for all of my classes. And then I map out my major due dates for that semester, whether that's a paper or an exam or presentation, just because those are gonna predominantly decide your grade in a college class. So you definitely wanna keep those deadlines in sight throughout the semester, rather than like, you know, know about them for the first time two weeks before. So I definitely recommend doing that. Um, another general tip is to incorporate checking your email into your social media routine. Um, in, in college, the main way your professors communicate with you is by email, which is something that's very different than high school. Um, so you definitely want to make sure you're checking your email every single day, um, just so you're always um, up to date with your classes. And you can also see what events are going on on campus, just because that's the, way, the main way the administration communicates with you as well. Um, as far as getting prepared for class every single day, um, I always recommend printing out the articles. And you, no matter what college class you take, there's always going to be a lot of reading. Um, so if the articles aren't super long or the readings aren't super long, I always recommend um, using the free printers on campus and taking advantage of that, printing out your articles just so you can annotate them. Um, so for example, this is an article from I think foreignpolicy.com that was for my American foreign policy class. And so what I like to do is to underline any words you don't know or major themes that you might discuss in the chapter. Also, if there's a long section that has a lot of great information, I like to do little summaries in the margin, just so when I'm in class and the professor's asking questions, I can quickly scan those notes instead of taking time to read the actual paragraphs so I can make sure I'm staying engaged in class. And that's really important just because Wofford professors value participation so much. And that is um, a commonality no matter what major or class you're in. As far as tests go, 
just because of my majors, which are environmental studies and government, I write a lot of papers as opposed to taking a lot of exams as you would if you were a STEM major. So I definitely recommend for papers or essay exams, which are taken in class, to make outlines um, to study for your test. And this will help you retain the information a lot better than if you just stared at your notes or stared at a PowerPoint or whatever your professor uses to um, portray the information for that class. Um, so here's an example for my um, philosophy class called environmental ethics. So what I have here, you can see I've got some charts drawn and I have my key terms highlighted. I have definitions and major the um, thesis theses and <laughs> um, you know major themes that ran throughout that unit. Uh, so that's always a really good idea just because when you're either typing or drawing or writing something you're a lot more likely to retain that information for an in-class exam or, or for a paper than if you were just staring at your notes which i feel like a lot of high schoolers kind of resort to um and then my last tip that i have for you guys um is kind of similar to the annotation tip that i had which is um about the notes so i always recommend when you're in an in-class lecture to always date it and this seemed like like a really, you know, minuscule tip, but I always find it really helpful that I date my lectures because I can always go back to them and use them as sources for my midterm or final papers. Um, you know, a lot of professors, they're not going to always post exactly what they're doing each day on the syllabus or online, so it's always great to keep track of that as you go yourself. Another tip I have regarding notes is if you have um, chapter readings in your textbook, I always, always recommend to just take, like, just jot down short little notes from the chapter. It may, I mean, it definitely will take more time um, for your chapter reading for your, like, daily homework, but you'll be super thankful that you did that at the end of the semester because by the time finals rolls around, you're basically going to have your own spark notes of the textbook, and that's always super helpful when reviewing for that. Um, so those are my major tips. Um, there are things I definitely didn't do in high school that I um, kind of developed since my freshman year that I found really helpful. Um, so I hope this helps um, and I will catch you guys later. All right, guys, so it is about five o'clock. So my day of study and going to classes is over. I hope you guys have found this to be a realistic vlog and that it's helped you get a sense of what an average Wofford student's day looks like on a weekday. Keep in mind that it is a Friday, so I might be studying a little bit later on other weekdays in the evening, but I try to cut myself off at about 8 o'clock just so I have time to decompress, relax, and do something mindless for my next day of classes. And above all, I hope this vlog shows you why I love Wofford so much and why its students find it to be such a special community and college to be at. You know, I, have, I really want to use this last segment to tell you guys about my college application process. For me, it was it was really long. I started my sophomore year and it was filled with a lot of uncertainty and unanswered questions that I'm sure you guys watching as high schoolers have too. Um, so I want to share you guys with you guys my favorite piece of advice that I actually heard from a Furman tour guide. So I have to give them credit on this one. It really helped me in my college admissions process. And it's when you find the school that you compare all others to the school that becomes the benchmark on your other college tours and college application process, that's where you need to go because you're going to be happiest there and you're going to fit in the most. So I, for me, that was Wofford and I hope it's for Wofford for you guys as well because it's just so special. Um, if you have any questions for me about my majors or my interests or any clubs I'm in, please feel free to contact me on Welcome to College or contact the um, admissions office. I'll catch you guys later.